Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 179, I'll talk to you about a very important concept in architecture called domain-to-architecture isomorphism. You can get a listing of all of the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday through my website at developertoarchitect.com slash lessons. Uh, this particular lesson is about how to choose or select the most appropriate architecture for your system and also uh, to make sure that you have the right architecture currently in place. Now, the three basic steps for selecting and choosing the right architecture is first, understanding the core business drivers and needs. What does that system have to support from a business perspective of the business needs? And we translate those business needs into architectural characteristics, uh, those things that some people call non-functional requirements. And from there, utilizing those we look for an architecture that matches those architecture characteristics. Let's look at a couple of examples. So the business says this, <clears throat> we're expecting constant change in this system and we need to get those changes released quickly. We also expect significant customer growth in the next six months, particularly as we aggressively acquire companies. That's our business need and our business goals. So we turn to a star rating chart that Neil Ford and I created in our book, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, which rates various architecture characteristics by star ratings. One star being not really well supported and five stars really well supported. And if we take a look at our particular problem, we see that this is the these, I should say, are the architecture characteristics that are important to us. Things like agility, deployability, evolvability, scalability, and finally, testability. And so we look for five stars, and we see quite a few of them here, but we do see a grouping of them. It turns out, makes a pretty good candidate, microservices. And so we choose to implement that particular business problem in microservices. But what happens is all the services need to communicate with each other. And this turns into a big ball of distributed mud, or what some people call a distributed monolith, and turns out to be an epic failure. Let me show you another scenario. The business says this, we have a very tight time frame and a very tight budget for the new system. We also want things grouped by domain areas since we're focusing on domains and we're going to undergo domain-driven design, DDD. So we convert that over to uh, architecture characteristics, go over to our star ratings, and we realize out of all these characteristics, uh, the ones that are important to us are cost and simplicity, and also domain partitioning. Now, we see a lot of domain partitioning across these different architecture styles, um, but with the cost and simplicity, modular monolith seems like a pretty good choice that matches those business needs. So we implement this system in the modular monolith, and what happens? Well, once it's deployed, all the developers are making constant changes to this single deployment unit as well as the monolithic database, stepping in each other's way, overlaying changes, uh, reducing reliability, and it turns out this system becomes an epic failure. Well, what happened? We followed a very sound process. Understand the business requirements, translate those to architecture characteristics, and look for an architecture that matches those. So why all of these epic failures? And how can we avoid these kind of epic failures? The answer lies into the topic of this video. Domain to architecture isomorphism, the missing ingredient 
to choosing the most appropriate architecture style. Now, the word isomorphism is a Greek word, isos, meaning equal, and morph, meaning form or shape. And what domain to architecture isomorphism is really asking is how close does the shape of your architecture match the shape of the problem domain? And it turns out that in too many cases, such as the ones I've showed you, this is just like putting a square peg in the round hole. The shapes don't match. Now, every architecture style has a particular shape to it. And that's what part two of Domain uh, to Architecture Isomorphism in two weeks, what I'm going to do is actually go through the shape of every one of these. Well, it also turns out that every problem has a shape as well. And let's see what happened. Let's take that first epic failure right here. What is the shape of this particular problem? Well, we listened to the business and we know we're expecting a high rate of change. Changes need to be done quickly and we're aggressively expanding our business. That's kind of the shape of this problem. And we chose an architecture style that matched that particular shape. But there was one other part of the shape of this problem that we didn't take into account. And that was high semantic coupling. Every request requires all of this functionality. In other words, the shape of this problem was really not conducive to individual separately deployed functions. Now let's turn to the other problem we had, and that was with the modular monolith. Now we take a look at the shape of our problem, which was low cost, get it done quickly, very tight time frames, and also domain partitioning. Well, certainly, the shape of this matches that very well. But there was another shape of this problem we didn't take into account. And that was constant change across this entire monolithic system. That's the shape of this problem. And so when we look at the shape of architectures, which we will do, of course, in the next uh, video, the next lesson, part two, it must match the shape of the problem we're trying to solve. And that's why there are so many epic failures in trying to choose the right architecture style. So this has been part one of Domain to Architecture Isomorphism. Uh, stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson, number 180, where I'll talk about part two of Domain to Architecture Isomorphism, which is to go over all of the shapes of the various architecture styles we have available to us. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in two more weeks.